guys, this is Adora, and I just got my AP scores back. Well, not just, it's actually been a week. Now, to give you a little bit of background, I took A Push, AP US History, and Art History, and English Lit and Composition. The great thing about these courses, well, mostly I guess I was playing in my strong suits. If I had taken calculus, I probably would have gotten ones and twos. But the point is that I took these three APs and my score, five, five, five. And I know I'm being like really kind of obnoxious and crowing about it. I figure that this is my first year taking APs and I deserve a little bit of time to crow about the results. Now, of course, however, I'm in an interesting conundrum because I am a student, I take lots of tests, I feel like I deserve to feel happy when I did really well on tests that I studied my ass off working for. Oh, oops. Um, yeah. Well, the point is that I made an epic timeline for Apush that basically stretched across the length of the room. For art history, we had a 1200 page book that weighed probably more than my baby cousin does. And for English Lit and Comp, I had this many flashcards, which I was still reviewing about 12 a.m. To give you an example of one of these flashcards, let me see. What have we got here? Pro prosody. To what does choriambus refer? Choriambus is a form of accentual poetical meter, consisting first of one stressed syllable, then two unstressed syllables, and then one stressed syllable. For example, go to the play is Coriambus. Now, I don't even know. They never ask questions about that. I was like, yes! I didn't have to memorize trochaic hexameter. Oh yeah! So, that pretty much made my day. However, the big part of the score is really the writing, so I felt like I was evaluated pretty fairly. I'm still amazed, though. My essay about the Great Gatsby made me sound like I was really sort of way into metaphors. I used a metaphor to describe a metaphor about a metaphor. If that's not really Inception-ish, I don't know what is. And I make too many jokes about Inception, but it's kind of unavoidable. When you do metaphors within metaphors within metaphors, you're asking for it. So, that's how much studying I did, and I hope that I deserve these vibes. The reason that I was so exuberant when I received them, I literally jumped up in the air, higher than I probably jumped before, and almost impaled my mom in the eye with this, sorry mom. I guess the reason I was so exuberant was because after you put in that much work, it feels good to have that return. Plus, I didn't think I was going to get fives at all. I was expecting maybe a spate of threes and fours, which possibly shows I should be more confident about myself, or that they really curved it this year. So, AP scores. Now, being quite an education reform activist and having a lot of friends who disagree vociferously with the whole concept of standardized testing, I also feel like a little bit of my joy has been taken away because, looking at this envelope, I'm suddenly bombarded with the feeling, well, should I be thinking standardized testing is evil, I don't care what the college board says, I'm never going to take an AP. Well, I can't do that because, quite honestly, I do care how I did, and I do want to see how people evaluated me. And I am really happy about getting fives. Do I think that there are ways that this whole thing could be improved? For sure. I think that there could be less focus on simple regurgitation of content knowledge. One thing I'm happy about the APs is that a lot of times there are questions more about cause and effect than there are necessarily about what year did Columbus sail the ocean blue. However, I still feel that in AP classes, the singular focus on let's get everyone to get fives on the test can sometimes compromise really interesting things. Case in point, my art history class had some amazing discussions about things that had nothing to do with the AP test. Are we ever going to have a question on the AP test about why people didn't figure out it wasn't a good idea to eat, to eat their own poop before uh, sanitation started happening? Probably not, but that was an awesome discussion. So. The key, I think, to maintaining a good balance is that we're not singularly focused on the test, that this test isn't make or break, because I know a lot of people, they really fear what their parents will say, what their friends will say, if their ego will take a dive, if they get anything less than a four or a five. And the most important thing to realize is that it's really about the learning. Then again, it's easy for me to say that because I got fives. And I wonder if I had gotten threes, or twos, God forbid, that I would be quite so contemplative. It's important, 
I think, to realize that even if we do spectacularly well on tests, if tests basically benefit us, that we should still consider them critically. Just because I do really well on the APs doesn't mean that I shouldn't say, hey, maybe we should have a different way of measuring whether students can skip college or introductory courses, because I know a lot of really smart people who um, would maybe do better on, say, not a multiple choice, more free response, or vice versa. So, in summary, even if something has benefited you spectacularly, like me getting fives, woohoo, we can always take a step back and ask larger questions. Is standardized testing a good thing? Do we prepare for it too much? Are AP classes sucking some of the love out of learning about a topic? Ultimately, I took AP classes because I wanted to challenge myself and because I wanted to learn about things more in depth, and I feel like it satisfied that goal. But I would have also liked to see a lot of learning happen even after the test was done. Thanks.